The Mad Lads over at 512 Audio have put a large diaphragm condenser capsule in a USB mic. And ooh boy, I actually think it's pretty good. This video is sponsored by GiveWell. Find out how to donate to the highest impact charities and get your donation matched up to $100 at the end of the video. Large diaphragm microphones, which is really just a measurement of the capsule inside a microphone, and it doesn't always mean a ton, but they have been some of my favorite microphones in terms of vocal profile for a while. As someone with a deeper register with some some bass down there that doesn't always get picked up the right way. Microphones like the insanely priced LCD. 1040 that from Lewitt that I would never recommend a streamer pick up, but that, you know, I got the chance to review this year. And then other mics like the CAD E100S, the LCT 440 Pure from Lewitt. Uh, microphones like that have been my favorite for a while, especially when you put in a little bit of effort for sound treatment and, you know, sound deadening in your space, which we covered last year a bunch. Uh, go check that out. I, they, they have quickly become some of my favorite microphones. The problem is, Getting that in a USB profile hasn't been a thing. That is, until today. This is the 512 Audio Tempest. This is a $160 USB mic, which is a little up there for a USB mic, but it's one that's designed to emulate the studio mic quality of the big boy XLR mics, but actually do that. A lot of microphones market that and tell you that's what they're doing or whatever, but the, the companies have no ex, you know experience making those microphones. 512 Audio does. 512 Audio is basically like a sub company of warm audio and warm audio makes wonderful microphones including a microphone i didn't list before which is the wa14 which i am in love with and i've used it a bunch this year you all were asking what it is i haven't got around to reviewing it yet but that is coming soon microphone reviews have been kind of awkward this year and they make wonderful preamps and all sorts of stuff and they spend a lot of time also kind of cloning really cl cloning's not a good word for it but you know making microphones that target the same sound profile as really old school classic microphones that people love and enjoy warm audio has a ton of experience and 512 audio is kind of their more consumer streamery kind of oriented company now admittedly their first couple forays into the microphone space that i reviewed I wasn't a huge fan of the 512 Skylight and Limelight, which were a, another studio condenser mic and then a dynamic mic that was designed to look similar to the Electro Voice RE20 and things like that. They were cheap, but honestly, I wasn't a huge fan of those microphones. This one's pretty rad. This is, like I said, a large diaphragm USB mic. You've got dials on the front for your headphone dial, which we're going to talk about, your microphone gain, and then a mute button. It appears like it might have some sort of built-in limiter, uh, which is pretty nice. Uh, to, I, I don't see that necessarily documented anywhere, but based on my experience with it, I think it might. And it's got a nice little LED indicator that changes on the button when you mute it. It's got a little glow to let you know that it's powered. I'm pretty happy with it. The headphone amp is also simultaneously the best and worst part about this microphone. Now, the main point of comparison I'm going to use based on its price point is the Elgato Wave. This is the Wave 3. They don't sell the Wave 1 anymore. I just discovered that they just kind of silently end of life the Elgato Wave 1 after they put it on crazy Amazon sales for a while. But they are now selling the Wave 3 for the price that the Wave 1 was sold for. So you can usually get it around 100 bucks now. I'm looking at it. Uh, Best Buy and Amazon have it for 114 B&H still has it for 150 so I think this is a fair point of comparison. Keeping in mind this is a two-year-old mic now versus a brand new one. There's always a little bit of a price delta there. The Wave has a capsule built by Lewitt, but it's a very small capsule compared to the large capsule and have similar things going for it. USB condenser mic made to sound like a good condenser mic, but made for more of the consumer audiences and that kind of thing. However, the Elgato comes with one superpower that the, the 512 doesn't, and that is the Wavelink software, which is a virtual audio mixing software. It gives you VST profiles for your microphone. It gives you uh, virtual audio channels on your PC to route your game sound m music through and all that to m mix separately. Really powerful stuff, but you can now get that with the Stream Deck Plus or, you know, whatever, or you could use Voice Meter or something. So it's a superpower in the Elgato's favor that I will always bring up because it's super powerful. 512 does not have this. Uh, Rode is now offering that on the Rode X, but otherwise, really good points of comparison here. You've, of course, been hearing the microphone this whole time completely unprocessed, uh, as I think condenser mics really kind of, uh, unlike dynamics, so the, uh, we, get, we always got to cover difference between dynamic and condenser microphones. Condenser microphones receive active power, 48 volts of phantom power. You don't have to toggle it because it's USB mic, but it receives that through 
the microphone electronics and that activates the capsule which then detects sound and picks up your voice whereas dynamic mics are activated by basically sound waves activating the capsule and thus are better at noise rejection and are usually tuned better for background noise rejection and things like that the upside of condenser mics is they sound a lot more in full a lot more natural they are much more pleasing for certain voices but they pick up more background sound so you're going to have a little bit of my pc fan noise in there and we'll get typing tests and things like that whereas dynamic mics are going to pick up a lot less of that but they're going to sound a little bit more compressed or a little bit more kind of broad Casty. And I think as a scene, the streaming scene is kind of moving more towards condenser microphones again because it's a much more pleasing and natural sound and the, the over-processed radio sound is just kind of exhausting to listen to for hours and hours and hours in a stream. And I think 512 have done a really great job of tuning the sound here. They specifically on their product page, they are targeting the Warm Audio WA47 Junior studio mic sound which admittedly is not a mic I have heard of. However, like I said, Warm Audio has a ton of experience. Uh, the WA47 Junior is a FET condenser microphone that costs about 250 bucks, 300 bucks. So you're getting it for about half the price, theoretically, which is pretty cool. You don't have any toggle capsules or anything like that. I usually think that's stupid. You just want a, a cardioid pickup pattern on most of these mics anyway. And I think it sounds pretty good. We're going to get to the comparisons and the talking typing test, and I'm going to shoot a new wave comparison for this, and we'll do a little bit of post-processing to spice it up so you can see. But I think this is a really compelling offering. So we're going to get to that, and then we got to talk about its biggest crutch, which is the headphone jack. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die, one for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die, one for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die, one for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die, one for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. Talking while typing, topping, talking while typing on mountain blue switches, talking while typing, clicking, general sounds, there you go. Talking while typing, talking while typing on mountain blue switches, talking while typing and clicking and general noise. I do think as I demoed whenever I reviewed the Elgato Wave, the LCT 440 Pure versus the Elgato Wave, the 440 having the bigger capsule from Lewitt versus the Wave, you get a lot more of the fullness and richness of my voice that isn't always picked up on microphones, and I really appreciate that. And frankly, I'm not even speaking in a low register right now. This is just kind of normal talk. And of course, you're going to have a little bit of proximity effect going on when you get up on it real close and you get further back from it and whatever and you can play with that in your space uh, the microphone itself comes with a shock mount as well as a standard mount and then the usb cable it doesn't come with a headphone extender i really hate the, the the thing i hate the most about usb mic workflows i honestly like i don't have any romantic attachment to xlr workflows and things like that especially since i don't use a ton of xlr processing gear i do have a warm audio wa12 uh, mic pre that i really love but otherwise i don't do a ton of hardware processing these days the channel strips just aren't good for that so the biggest part of the usb micro microphone workflow that i hate is the headphone jack on the device itself is never good it's always bad there's never a good workflow for it and most microphones don't come with an extension cable for it the beacon does and the rodex stuff that i've been playing around with does but this microphone does not so then you know it's on the front of the microphone so your headphone cables dangling and it's just really awkward it has a headphone amp. It is a zero latency loop through for the mic and it actually sounds really crisp and rich, which is great. And then playing back system sound, it sounds great. I am powering my DT900 Pro X off of these. Wonderful headphones from Bayer Dynamic, but they are not easy to drive. They take quite a bit of power. On the Rode X USB microphones, there is a constant hiss and whine and noise in there because the headphone amp is incredibly noisy. On this microphone, it is crisp, it is clear, it is great. How, however, there seems to be a problem here in that I think the loop through from the mic capsule itself, either mine has a short or it is just not routed properly in the software because, or in the, in the software, in the electronics of the microphone, because mine clips 
Like, even at this speaking volume, which is really, really low on audition, I'm pulling it up. I'm at, like, I'm peaking at, like, minus 9 if I get really loud, and this level is, like, minus 15 dB. If I put on these headphones, I am talking it. It is so distracting because I am clipping like mad right now, which is really bizarre, and it's way too distracting. Like, I can't, I can't do anything with this. Like, it, it, it's, it's make it, like... I had to re-record the start of this video over and over because every time I started recording it, it's clipping and distorting in my ear and I keep having to check my levels. I'm like, oh God, this video is going to sound terrible. I got to reshoot the whole thing because I'm clipping. I'm not actually clipping, but to my headphones I'm on. This only affects the loop through. The system sounds aren't clipping. It is just the loop through. And there's no balance knob. Like a lot of, actually, even the Wave has it. The third setting for the Wave 3 with it, being three is you can change the balance of your mic monitor versus your system sound this mic doesn't have that and so i can't turn this down this is always there if i'm using it so i'm always clipping and it's so distracting it's also really weird because i think this microphone has clipping protection some sort of limiter in it because if i clink if i crank the microphone gain dial all the way up here check check one two check check one two again i am super clipping in my ears but it does not even at max volume it did not reach clipping digitally. It, I haven't made it clip, which is really impressive. It either ha just has a really low gain threshold and a ton of gain it can crank at it, or it has some sort of limiter in it or compressor that keeps it from clipping, which is a huge thumbs up in my book. So it's frustrating because the headphone amp is so clean and clear to power even high, I can't, I can't do it, <laughs> to even power like high-end headphones that that is a huge selling point for this microphone. But clipping internally is not good. So... You, you you don't need to use the on mic headphone. You, you use it for the loop back or whatever. You don't need to, but it is... I, I hope I have a defective unit. It's also worth noting that the headphone amp on the Elgato Wave 3 mic is also pretty solid in terms of having no noise or hiss or interference or anything like that. However, it doesn't feel like it has as much amperage, you know, headphone amp capability as the... Uh, the the 512 does because it just does, it doesn't feel as clear and crisp as it does but sounds great and there's no weird clipping of the mic into your monitoring either though so pretty good 150 160 bucks for this microphone i wish i hadn't forgotten that 160 bucks msrp you could probably get it for cheaper at this point it's been out a little while i've been super slow on getting my microphone reviews done it records in 24 bit 48 kilohertz Nothing special, but nothing, like, it doesn't need to be special. Like, that's great. That's fine. That's what everyone needs. USB-C connectivity, like I said, comes with a shock mount in the box, which is always the hardest thing to, like, fine-tune to a microphone. So I am very impressed. I, I think it holds up great against the Elgato Wave, which I think is kind of the big, for content creators and streamers, the big competition you would be looking at. I think it holds up great there. I'm pretty impressed. I just hope they can fix the headphone amp. I, I, I think that's the biggest thing. So. Many of us open our hearts and make donations during the holiday season. But when you donate, how can you feel confident that your donations are really making a big impact? You could do weeks of research to find out, you know, to find charities, to figure out what they do, to figure out how effective they are, how the charity might use any additional money they get, make sure they aren't wrapped up in any, any controversy. Or you could just visit givewell.org. You'll find free research there and recommendations about the charities that can save or improve the most lives per dollar. GiveWell does all of that research for you, hardcore style, spending over 40,000 hours each year researching charitable orgs and only directs funding to a select few of the highest impact evidence-based ones that they have found. GiveWell has donated more than a billion dollars through over 100,000 donors, saving over 150,000 lives and improving the lives of millions more. The cool thing is, using GiveWell is completely free. GiveWell doesn't just want to rake in your money. They want to educate donors and allow them to make the most informed and highest impact donations they can and as many people as they can, which means all of their research and recommendations are published for free on their website. You don't got to sign up for anything and your tax deductible donation is just allocated to the charity or to the fund that you choose without them taking a cut. Pretty rad. Plus, they'll match your donation up to $100 before the end of the year, meaning that you can make sure even more funds than you're actually donating get donated, which 
you can't beat that. I honestly recommend just rolling the GiveWell Top Charities Fund, the charities that GiveWell has determined to be the most effective each quarter. And they do evaluate that each quarter, which is interesting, so that your donation is divvied up to the best places. Just head on over to GiveWell.org slash Epos to donate and choose YouTube and then enter Epos at checkout to make sure that your donation is matched. So product links will be in the description down below and you need to click through to watch my review of this microphone as it provides more context into the condenser mic space if you're used to hearing about dynamics and things like that. You need to click through to that or just check out my general mic reviews playlist to catch up and make sure you're picking the right choice for you. Never buy a microphone based on a single review the second you hear from it. Look at other samples, look at other reviews, look at other microphone options available to you in those videos. And remember to be kind, rewind.